is starting patch 9.2 a bloody horrible experience, especially on a new tune? Shadowlands has got layers of progression, right? And I think people just think, oh, renown for soulbinds and conduits. Getting the actual conduits themselves. Getting legendary powers. Getting legendary crafting resources. Getting money for legendaries. Doing years of Torghast. Corthia? Domination shards? Turns out you don't have to do those at all. <laughs> all of this can seem like a lot, and any time like, I bring up the prospect of playing WoW again, I just get a million messages of like, <laughs> lol no, from loads of people. So today I wanted to sit down, cut through all that, and work out what's it actually like getting started on a fresh character in 9.2? Does it suck? Does it feel like people would have you believe? Or have Blizzard actually done plenty to cut down the chores, making it a pretty decent experience? The answer... It depends, big time. What do we want? Well, we want decent gear to get started. We want plenty of renown because that unlocks soul binds, uh, the conduit slots, and of course the empowerments for those conduit slots. Then we want to get the actual conduits themselves, and I suppose ideally at a decent item level. Oh, and we'll want a legendary, perhaps a few of them. And of course that's going to mean we'll need some soul ash, we'll need some soul cinders, we'll need the legendary memories as well, plus a heap of gold. This is where things could go excellently if you've got a character at Renown level 80, all right? If you do, then go to this vendor in Orbos. 500 gold gets you the item that lets you set Renown to level 40 on an alt. And then another 500 gold gets you the one that learns all conduits at high level 200. And even beyond that, you can send anima to your alts 1,000 at a time for no fee. Now this is big. Then there's a vendor in the new 9.2 hub that sells eye level 226 gear tokens for 500 anima apiece. So, what, 12 tokens for all your gear, then, you know, weapons and uh, trinkets, those are a single token each, so you'll probably need more than one. Um, so let's just say 18 tokens in total. That's a whole 226 set, and that'll cost 9,000 anima. Now, I've barely even played 9-1, like I basically just raid logged and then the guild stopped raiding, and I have 20,000 anima. So that kind of bodes well for most of us. Conduits then? Well, yep, that Orbos vendor will get all of them to 200, assuming that your main is renowned level 80. Now, if you hit friendly with the Enlightened faction in 9-2, then you'll be able to buy this item from their vendor. It's the same as the other one, but it sets them all to item level 226. Everyone will hit friendly in no time, which just makes basic conduit coverage trivial. Just like what squarespace.com forward slash belly their gaming today's sponsor does for the web and go to that link, you'll get a discount. Now the Pale Beyond's reveal was uh, almost upon me a few months ago and not really that much was done. I needed a website quick, so over the weekend I hopped onto Squarespace's very easy to use site builder and Bellular.Games came into being real quick. This time I even uh, used some custom CSS, some code injection, and that's really what's cool. Uh, lots of easy to use tools, but also plenty of headroom to do the fancy business if you really want to. And uh, they've also got things like easy to add memberships, email lists, e-commerce, and loads of other fantastic features made easy. So from what I built in like 40 minutes, just chilling with my iPad and the sofa with their award-winning templates, to a more in-depth build like our games one, Squarespace just is the fast and easy way for you to get a fantastic looking web presence. And having that is an important thing. It's going to be people's first impression of you online, so that's major, uh, those really count. So just go over to squarespace.com forward slash Bellier Gaming, use that Bellier Gaming code as well for 10% off so thanks to Squarespace, and uh, let's talk Renown. If you don't have a character at Renown level 80, oh boy. First, hey, that's me. <laughs> Second, yeah, for us it's a bit more complicated. So if your main character is above Renown level 40, like mine is, then it makes sense to get your main to Renown level 80, so you can then give your alt the boost to 40. Now that's especially good if you get your alt up to Renown level 40, and then level your alt from levels 50 through to 60 using the Threads of Fate system, because doing that, you'll easily get 20 plus Renown. You'll probably hit level 60 with like 65 Renown in your new alt. So you'll be leveling it anyway. If you do it in the right order, then bam, that's, that's fantastic. 
Uh, now the how here is, is a bit mixed though for increasing renown, be it on your main or on your new alt. The fastest way to do it is basically to chain run Torghast Layer 9, ideally a wing that's nice and short like Skaldus. Uh, most of the runs will get you a renown level, it starts to taper off towards the end though, but you will also get a ton of soul ash, which is great, and even some soul cinders. Now, this is pretty effective, but it's not that fun because it's quite repetitive, but on the bright side, all that soul ash can be transferred over to your new alt. Yeah, there's like a little bit of a tax on it, but you can do that. Um, so right now, you can send ash via this NPC in Corthia. When 9-2 drop cinders will be transferable, but you'll have to wait until 9-2. Then, there's actually patch 9.2's new boss rush mode called the Jailer's Gauntlet. Obviously, you can't do that right now to get caught up, but it does mean that... Well, okay, Wowhead found that doing a layer 3 of that dropped 1800 soul ash and 460 cinders. That basically means that it is another way to just get those legendary resources pretty damn quick. I mean, a rank 6 legendary costs 5,150 ash and 1,650 cinders. And with the current rates of acquisition, honestly, it's just not that bad. Now, thankfully then, the new patch 9.2 legendary rank, that requires Cosmic Flux. That's a 9.2 currency, you don't have to worry about that right now, and you'll basically get it by just doing whatever you're doing anyway. Now, what all of this does mean, though, is that the process of catching up on Renown, on your main character, in order to get your alt the Renown level 40 boost. For me, because I was doing that partially via Torghast, it meant I got loads of Soul Ash and a decent amount of Cinders, which is exactly what my new alt is going to need for its Legendary. So, if you then diversify how you earn that Renown a little bit, maybe doing the Corthia Shaping Fate quest, then you'll also earn some Anima. Of course, that Anima can be sent over to your alt to buy those new item level 226 gear tokens. Oh, and if you've got the cash, then the new crafted gear in 9.2 is eye level 233. So that is a great option. Of course, only once the crafters actually are able to craft it, which will require honored with a new inline rep. So far, then, it's not looking that bad. It's just a little bit of time, but it's not that complex. Now, I can't say it's looking super fun. What else then? Well, legendary power learning. That can be frustrating. I mean, for my Frost Mage, let's just say I want Freezing Winds and I want Slick Ice. That's going to involve killing Sire Denathrius, I guess via LFR, and then a, uh, a Layer 3 or above clear of Mort Vergar. Definitely chores, but not really that time consuming. The only thing that would really be a pain in the ass is if your legendary memory was tied to a, a world boss or, well, you know, obviously a Torghast wing that's just not available. And, you know, in whatever week you're watching this video. Now, there are legendary power learning items, you know, the ones that just randomly learn a power, but because they just unlock one at random, I wouldn't really rely on that for getting the one you want on your new alt. As for the rest then, being real, like you can just jump straight into 9-2. I don't really need to do a lot of busy work beforehand to do the Zareth Mortis campaign. And of course, if you do the Zareth Mortis campaign in your main, and then you try to take an alt through that, you can actually skip to the, you can skip uh, chapters one, two, and three which just gets you the full zone unlocked. And that means that on the whole, this stuff is not that bad, really. It's not fantastic. I mean, ultimately, in order to get my new character to start feeling okay, yeah, I'm having to do a bunch of busy work on my main character. Callings, Torghast, Shaping Fate, all that stuff. Now, the good news there is because of the anima that I can then turn into alt gear and then Lego resources, I am knocking out many birds with one stone. But the bad thing is that all that gameplay in my main is purely just a means to an end. What motivates me to play WoW right now? I want to have fun with my Frost Mage. So when I'm not doing that, it doesn't feel good. You know, it's not that enjoyable, and it does reflect how Shadowlands just hasn't really had that much fun content outside of the grouped stuff. I mean, at a basic level, getting an alt up to essentially being quite playable, that's easy. But what about optimal? Well you'll basically need to get that alt up to renown level 80 to empower your conduits. And that's going to mean just doing a bunch of content. So if you want to hyper grind that, it's going to absolutely suck, right? Because you're just doing Torghast layer nines. But if you, like me, are content to just slowly get that over weeks as you do stuff, then it's not going to feel that bad. You know, hyper game it, it'll be mind numbing. 
But this is the sort of thing that happens when you slot a system like Renown into an expansion and then tie it to the borrowed power. It just ties all these things together. And then as for the conduits themselves, look, I am happy enough with I level 226. If you want to upgrade them beyond that, then basically there's the Corthy upgrade items. I don't think anyone wants to do that shit again. Uh, of course, in the new patch, Mythic Plus and Raids do drop uh, the conduits at updated item levels. But oddly enough, 9.2 has got no conduit upgrade item like 9.0 or 9.1 does. Maybe they'll patch one in, but it's the release candidate right now and it ain't there. So you're either getting the old ones uh, via Corthia, which no one in the right mind will want to do, or there is the big item that brings all your covenant uh, or your conduits to, I think, 278. But that involves like being super high PVP, uh, completing the mythic raid, or like, you know, doing the mythic raid equivalent uh, for, for dungeons, for mythic plus dungeons. So it's more of a like big reward at the end than it is a catch up. Still, there is a weird gap in it because if your conduit isn't on the Mythic Plus or Raid loot table, then what, are you really going back to Corthia in search of the 252 upgrades? I mean, that's utter insanity, so I imagine... Surely it can't go live like that, right? Okay, to bring this video into a conclusion, really, it's not a horrible experience. It's not that bad to start a new alt in Shadowlands. This may have been a different answer in the past, but they've done a good job with the catch-up systems, even though they're not particularly intuitive, and you really do need a guide like this, or maybe a Wowhead article to steer you in the right direction. Starting the game fresh right now, it will be pretty darn rough. And I think trying to feel fully optimal, I don't think that will be fun. Really, it's the sort of thing that feels worse than it is for a use case like mine, and that's not to discount people's feelings. Um, it feels like that because these systems don't feel good. Zooming through a rubbish top-level design is better than trudging through it, but that doesn't make it a fun experience. Also, having these layers of systems, that means that Blizzard constantly needs to think about catch-up systems with every single patch. And those catch-up systems will always devalue people's past efforts. And that just does leave me thinking that we need to reinvest in class fundamentals. We need to strip out that borrowed power. We need to increase the end game variety uh, via new modalities of progression, maybe at revamped mounts that are more exciting, uh, player housing, guild housing, uh, maybe a little plot of uh, land, a farm, uh, new forms of world content to do, you know, new things, more horizontal. I think do that, and then we won't be in this funky situation where, you know, all of the game feels so small because it's just tied into the three end game pillars, right? With it all just being this like single big progression. I'm excited to get stuck into a mage. And I am glad that the development team have broken down those barriers. I'm very appreciative of it. it I mean, if they didn't do that, I wouldn't be playing this patch. But I just cannot help but feel that there's another way. Perhaps more account wide progress is the answer here. Um, you know, in such a way that swapping classes could feel a bit more like swapping jobs in FF14. Because that's very much a game where, you know, you swap your job, you level it, you get some gear, that's it, you're done. All the other stuff's tied to your character. You know, and the sorts of busy work that exist in WoW just don't exist in FF. And I'm sure that leads to less playtime, but I think it leads to happier people. One thing that feels extra bad, though, is that I don't want to touch my mage and do any Renown eligible activity until I've ground out Renown level 80 and the boost on my main. Because if I earn a Renown level while my mage is under Renown level 40, then because I'll just use the item and get to 40 anyway, my efforts will be wasted, right? So what I want to do is play the mage, but right now the reward structure of World of Warcraft makes me feel like I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing to play my mage. And I think that's a fundamental problem. Now for me, I don't give a toss about, you know, optimizing my conduits beyond 226. I'm just gonna take what I can get. But even just having the character feel playable, that is hit by not wanting to do the Renown progression in the wrong order. I think this is a very fundamental problem to the Shadowlands expansion. It's one they've tried to fix via these little band-aid catch-up thingies. But once we're in Tenno, it shouldn't exist, and I really hope we'll be benefiting from a development team who months ago did listen and did implement those various different skips uh, that I've mentioned in today's video, um, and hopefully learned, because if they hadn't done those things, I really don't feel like it would be worth my while to play 9.2 now. But because 
It's actually not that bad to start a new ult in 9.2, and I'm pretty excited to just try Frostmage for the fun. Yeah, I'm in.